Well, Andrew, thanks again for joining us and everyone else. Um, maybe if uh, we start again as we did last time, maybe if you can uh, uh, talk a little bit uh, what uh, you're planning to do for your training in the next, uh, next four weeks and uh, what uh, workouts you will be focusing on. Last time when we spoke, I said the usually the plan for the first part of the year is just to try and get back into activities, do stuff that's a bit more fun, hopefully try to start to reintroduce a little bit of running and stuff. Uh, now it's more of a sort of progression of turning from that in and getting back to being a little bit more structured. So really trying try to get back into having a proper, proper, proper plan of what you're doing. And it's really important to now phase back in, phase back in roller skiing and running so that you're getting up to a good volume of that over the next next few weeks but also phasing it back in in a sensible sort of way so you don't just start smashing out really long roller ski sessions without being used to it because I often find I get problems with my elbows if I don't phase back into it and the same with running I end up just being absolutely wrecked if I uh, <laughs> if I if I just jump straight back into it so a bit of progression to that and for me what's important is uh trying to get in a couple of good interval sessions a week so for me in this phase it's about trying to build usually I have focused on threshold type training and building building the volume up so I start off with fairly uh, short uh, intervals for being a threshold type stuff so I'll start off with just like 30 minutes total volume for being a, a sort of a threshold session is really short but then each week I'll try and build that up slightly and um, I have a bit of a mix of roller skiing and running in on those sessions so I'll start off with maybe a five times six minutes shouldn't be too too challenging and then hopefully by the end of uh by the end of the next block I'll be up to doing threshold intervals a couple of times a week up to um around about an hour's total duration of intensity time and then if I'm gonna I'd like to mix in a little bit of harder sessions just occasionally so one or two just a little bit more above threshold and I like to try and get involved if there's a local running race or a roller ski race or something I'm a bike on Zwift as well so if there's a I'll join in a Zwift race so again something like that uh once or twice in a month is is a good sort of extra thing to get in but that's basically my my rough plan for the next four or five weeks and andrew we've got a few questions uh from uh our members i'll just start with the first one um uh, please share with us your favorite and fun exercise to balance in skate ski do you have any uh, for roller skiing, uh, or definitely in the summer now when I'm roller skiing, it's uh, there are a lot of good drills you can do. Um, the classic one that I've done, uh, or I always do when I'm out on a long session, I'll put in a wee bit of, is what we call, in Britain, we call it skate four. So we've got, the, like, I don't, you guys, I think you guys call the technique slightly different than what we do in Britain, but like you've got V2, I think you guys call it, where you pull on both sides. And when I, we call it skate four or maybe you guys say v4 when you do two poles on each side and you really try and challenge the balance on the roller ski um that's simple exercise a lot of people will have done it um but, but it really is good for just trying to get the balance over the ski and I, I feel like it helps me rhythmically as well when i'm out skiing if i do that then my rhythm when i go back to normal v2 feels uh feels uh yeah, better after doing that. Um, and then also, I like to, when I'm on a downhill, uh, try and challenge my balance by, uh, instead of just tucking down the hill, trying to glide on one ski. And it's like quite easy to get down a, down a hill on one ski if you hop about and like readjust by hopping. But I really try and stay flat. And, and like you can make roller skis carve a wee bit. So I try and use my ankle to change the direction of the ski and keep it in line as opposed to hopping. I try, try and keep the ski flat all the time. That, that's the main thing for me because 
it doesn't challenge it challenges your balance if you're doing the hop in as well but it's it's good if you can manage to keep your ski flat and stable and not hop and stand up as long as possible so that, that's the kind of two things i do for balance focus on roller skis any uh favorite drills on the classic roller skis um when i class one thing i really like to do uh, classic roller skiing is uh, you've got if you've got, watched the world cup you've probably seen johannes Klabo and the way he does classic skiing up hills where it's just like running and he's super fast and has a very short contact time with his feet on the ground um and i like to do that but instead of doing it up a steep hill i'll go on to a gradual downhill and try and do the same thing and so then i try and not let the roller skis roll at all and have really short contact time. So then you've got to be super fast on your feet to not let the roller skis, to not let the roller skis roll. And that's a super good tempo training and also balance training at the same time. And then, yeah, as, I, as I've been growing up, I've done the sort of standard, um, every week we'll have had a session, putting out cones, doing like slalom between the cones, bit backwards, roundabout, sort of relays and stuff like that. So I, I'm still, we still do that um, on through the winter and on the on roller skis in the summer sometimes. Um, so yeah, all sorts of stuff like that's good.